find out why many people say this is the most scenic train in the Amtrak network. Welcome to a new Trains Are Awesome video. In our last video, you watched us, Tom and Lindsay, begin on a two-week train journey using our USA Rail Passes. These passes let you take 10 trips in Amtrak coach, normally for $500, but we bought them on sale for $300 a person. Our first train was the famous California Zephyr, which we boarded in Chicago, headed west. Day one, we crossed rural Illinois and Iowa. In today's video, it's day two on the California Zephyr. Salt Lake City is where we'll be getting off tonight, but first there's an entire day of breathtaking scenery ahead of us. I first opened my eyes in McCook, Nebraska. The sun wasn't up yet, and luckily I fell asleep again for a little bit. Here's me pretending to be asleep. When I opened my eyes again, the sun was rising and we were in the state of Colorado. Don't believe me? Just ask the conductor. Good morning, it's day two aboard the California Zephyr. We're in Colorado right now. We slept through most of Nebraska and we're about an hour away from Denver, which is where we'll have a little bit of a fresh air stop. How did we sleep? I think we slept pretty good. The new Superliner seats are pretty comfortable and it was just very helpful to be able to sit next to each other. So, you know, there's a little bit more freedom of movement in how you lay down. Overall, absolutely no complaints. Eastern Colorado is deceivingly flat. It's almost impossible to tell that we're at about a mile above sea level here, and we're going to spend the majority of the day even higher up in the mountains. One of my favorite things about this part of Colorado is if you look outside the window, you'll see prairie dogs staring right back at your train. There's one. This mess of chimneys and pipes is our first sign that we're in the greater Denver area. A slightly cleaner clue are the overhead wires used by RTD commuter trains. Denver has a reasonably good commuter rail system, all newly built and electrified. I've done a few reviews on it in the past, you can check those videos out by clicking the link above. There's the Denver skyline! For the past thousand miles, ever since we left Chicago, we've been traveling on tracks owned by the BNSF Railway. That's about to change, as after Denver, we'll switch over to Union Pacific trackage, which the train will use all the way down to Emeryville. Denver Union Station is a stub end station, so before entering the station, our train must change direction. We take a spur from the BNSF line to the Union Pacific line. When our entire train is on UP tracks, we begin our slow backup into the station. station. We just ask that you guys kind of stay in your seats while we do this backup move. We're going to have to throw some switches, so please stay clear of all the stairs, vestibules, and aisleways so our crew can get in through and do those switching moves expeditiously. Thank you, and we'll talk to you soon. The train is a little delayed, which means our time in Denver will be a little bit shorter than normal. Alright, Denver Union Station. We've got about 20 minutes here. Should be just enough time to check out the beautiful station building. Maybe get something warm to drink. Though the weather is gorgeous today. I've come into Denver Union Station a number of times on RTD, but this was my first time on Amtrak. This is the beautiful main hall of Denver Union Station, which has been converted into the Crawford Hotel. One of our favorite coffee shops is here, called the Pig Train Coffee Company. Unfortunately, the line was insane, and we didn't feel comfortable waiting that long, so Lindsay just got some coffee from the cart. As much as I love Denver, I rushed to get back on the train. So we're still in Denver, but I'm back on the train already. I wanted to get on the train before all the new Denver passengers board because we're about to head into the Rocky Mountains and I wanted to make sure I had a seat 
in the observation car since I think it'll get pretty competitive in here. Trust me, only the observation car could do today's views justice. And the windows are going to be nice and clean. Finally leaving Denver. We are uh, just now departing Denver. The Colorado Rockies baseball stadium is off to your right. We're about ready to see the scenic wonders of the underside of the 23rd Street Viaduct. <laughs> Whoa. 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 We'll make our way through the yards of Denver on our way to the Rocky Mountains. Should be a great day. I'll give a few spe uh, scenic announcements. Terry will keep you posted on all the business stuff. Should be a fun day. Thanks for riding with us. Sorry we're a little bit late, but it's a train. you got to respect it. Thank you. <laughs> We're running parallel to the RTD G line, but only for a little bit. Once the G line branches off, our ascent into the Rocky Mountains truly begins. Our train is on the Union Pacific's Moffett subdivision. One of the first major curves we hit is the Big Ten curve. The name Big Ten comes from the fact that the radius of the curve is 10 degrees. A row of hopper cars, filled with cement, protect the tracks from the strong winds that this area is notorious for. The train didn't always run this way. For a long time, the Moffett subdivision belonged to the Rio Grande and Western Railroad. In 1971, Amtrak was formed to take over passenger trains from private railway companies around the country. Except, Denver and Rio Grande Western didn't join Amtrak. They opted out and chose to keep running their own passenger trains. So Amtrak San Francisco Zephyr, which is what the train was called, had to take a different route between Denver and Utah. They took what's known as the Overland Route, through Wyoming. Ogden, Utah is where the trains joined back up with the existing route. The Denver and Rio Grande Western ran their own train, the Rio Grande Zephyr, from Denver to Ogden. But in 1983, they were done doing that. Amtrak now had the opportunity to reroute their train over the Moffett subdivision. The tracks were on now. They used the occasion to rename the train from the San Francisco Zephyr to the California Zephyr. There are 43 tunnels on this stretch, and each time you pop out of one, the views are even more breathtaking than before. You know, 20 minutes later, that's fine for you. I know. It's a great Man, that sounds awesome. When my family was out here. 
We're about to enter the Moffat Tunnel. This tunnel opened in 1928. It is 6 miles or 10 kilometers long, making it the longest tunnel on the California Zephyr route. More impressively, in my opinion, we are now at the highest point of our journey. The Moffat Tunnel lies under James Peak, and we are now traveling at a height of 9,239 feet, or 2,816 meters, above sea level. It's at this point that we cross the Continental Divide. Before the tunnel, the conductor strictly warns us not to walk from car to car while we're inside. Doing so will let stinky diesel fumes into the train. Immediately after popping out of the West Portal, we pass through the Winter Park Ski Resort. During the winter months, Amtrak runs their special Winter Park Express here, but today we pass through. Once we've cleared, the doors of the tunnel close and a ventilation system begins to work on clearing those diesel fumes we left in there. Fraser, Colorado, two hours after Denver. It is a lot chillier out here. I have a fresh green salad for seven fifty, or I have a vegan tamale. I've also got macaroni and cheese. I have grilled cheese sandwiches. Lunchtime. It's like a chalet. <laughs> At first, we will spend some time following the Fraser River, but then once we reach Granby, Colorado, we will switch over to the Colorado River and follow that most of the rest of the day. Another one of those iconic American rivers, the Colorado is over 1400 miles or 2300 kilometers long. Its source is not far away from where we are right now, and the river flows through seven U.S. states and two Mexican states. It also runs through 11 national parks. Ever heard of the Grand Canyon? You can thank the Colorado River for that. This is a very popular spot for whitewater rafting. I think somebody just spotted somebody. Tradition is among the rafters if they see a train coming by to moon the train. <laughs> now that we've seen butt cheeks, I'd say that at the end of the day we'll have had the full California Zephyr experience. Now, a bit more about the history of this train. For many years, this was not one train, but three. The California Zephyr ran combined with the Desert Wind and the Pioneer. Forming a train as long as 16 superliners, this triple train ran combined from Chicago all the way to Ogden, Utah. There, the Desert Wind would head southwest to Las Vegas and Los Angeles, while the Pioneer split off and traveled northwest to Boise, Portland, and Seattle. Man, I wish those trains still existed. Later, with the reroute, the split was moved to Salt Lake City. Now, the gradients on these tracks are no joke. It took four locomotives to pull those 16 superliners up all those slopes. So, in 1991, the split was moved to Denver. Sort of. The California Zephyr and Desert Wind stayed combined until Salt Lake City. The Pioneer, however, was split off in Denver. It then took the overland route we discussed earlier through Wyoming. This lightened the load and sped up the trip for the Pioneer. Sadly, the Desert Wind and the Pioneer both stopped running in 1997. Now, just the California Zephyr remains. I've seen two live deer and at least 20 dead ones. The last minute I didn't pack my <laughs> if you're really, really, if everybody's totally quiet, you can hear the water. Ah. Yep. 
always have a, an ugly naked baby girl across the hall, across the other building. Oh. One of the reasons why you have to experience the California Zephyr at least once is because like many long distance Amtrak trains, it runs for hours through scenery that you will never be able to see unless you take the train. Or in this case, go white water rafting. <laughs> This is another great view. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Spectacular thumbs up. I'm just looking at this to jog my memory. No one's buying these photos on eBay. <laughs> We felt so privileged to join the club of people over the decades who have had the opportunity to see these beautiful sights. I think it's a sentiment that was shared by everyone in our car. We shared the lounge with bird watchers, boomers, and backpackers. People who had been traveling for a month all the way from Vermont, and people who had just gotten on in Denver for their first Amtrak trip ever. A Mennonite family took up a few tables, traveling to California where their father was meeting new vendors to sell his farm's produce to. His sons were taking the occasional picture of rock formations or waterfalls with their flip phones. There's something uniting about the experience and it's why I like to sit in the Sightseer Lounge. Running through these remote, isolated tracks does have one drawback, however. About an hour out from Glenwood Springs, all staff was called to one of the coach cars. A passenger was having a medical emergency. Now, we were still 45 minutes out from any road or town. Of course, the engineers couldn't move the train any faster. After all, we're on steep, curvy tracks on the edge of a cliff. So, a tense hour followed. Such a pretty contrast to the blue sky. Oh, there's 
a park. The arrival of paramedics meant that those of us in the lounge who wanted to get some fresh air had to travel through the dining car and a sleeper car. Curious what an Amtrak dining experience is like? In a few weeks, I will share a video of us getting breakfast on the train. Make sure to subscribe to Trains Are Awesome so you don't miss it. This is actually my first time in an Amtrak sleeper car. A lot of people asked under the last video why we are in coach and not a sleeper. It seems like this is a good time to remind everyone that we are traveling on a USA rail pass that was discounted to $300 a person. We would rather spend $600 on 10 trips in coach than a similar amount on just one trip in a sleeper. People are not exaggerating when they say this is some of the most beautiful scenery in the United States. I am just continually speechless. That mountain over there, that is Mount Garfield. It's the highest peak in the Book Cliffs, which is what that range over there is called. Uh, folks, uh, with that in mind, we're about 10 to 15 minutes from Grand Junction, Colorado. That'll be our next station stop. It's a fresh air break as well. Uh, we'll be there for about 10 minutes as it is a crew change. You're operating crew members, uh, such as your conductors and engineers, myself included. We'll be stepping off allowing the Salt Lake City crew to usher you on through the, the wonderful wastelands of Utah. All right, Grand Junction, Colorado. Last stop in this state. How's your day been? Pretty relaxing. I think I got sunburnt in the, in the observation car, so we're taking it easy in, the, in our seats for now, but it's been really nice. We've been meeting some nice new people and overall very relaxing. What were some of your favorite views? Definitely just looking up um, like directly up on the observation car and seeing all the rock formations, but there were a lot of little waterfalls and stuff on the way too, and that was really beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know what we haven't done yet since Chicago? Look at the locomotives. Also, Grand Junction has like Three station buildings, I think? Now, when I was a kid, for some reason, I thought that Grand Junction was a place they had made up for movies. You know, it sounds all western and railroady. 
but it is a real place, and actually, with a population of 65,000, it's the largest city in western Colorado. It was named after the Grand River, the old name for the portion of the Colorado River that we have been following up to this point. One thing that I really appreciate about both the Denver crew and the new Salt Lake City crew is how much like geographical information they share in their PA announcements. It really helps you get to learn new things about the place that you're traveling through. So this is the Ruby Canyon. We're gonna follow this into the state of Utah. Honestly, it's almost overwhelming just how much gorgeous scenery is crammed into just one day. The Ruby Canyon lies on the border between Colorado and Utah. Like many of the places we've traveled through today, it's one of those areas that you can only see if you're on the train or whitewater rafting. They're waving. Oh, did they? Oh yeah. my gosh, The hey. yeah, wait, 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 figure. The way the evening sunlight is reflecting off the canyon, it's just magical. Hey Lindsay, we are now officially in Utah. New state for both of us. Sunset, day two aboard the California Zephyr. We have some time to unwind in our seats as the darkness surrounds the train once again. Stopping at Provo means we're in the Wasatch Front and Salt Lake City is next. Time to head downstairs and grab our suitcase. Welcome to Salt Lake City. I don't know why, but I was expecting an enclosed station. <laughs> yeah, me too. Since I'm built a little nicer. So we've made it to Salt Lake City Central Station. Um, I didn't know it was gonna be a really long walk down a platform outside. It doesn't matter because the weather is decent. Uh, a little bit inconvenient that the light rail is not running at the time that the Amtrak is supposed to come in. That being said, we are about an hour and a half late and it's no big deal because our hostel is right around the corner and we're just gonna hop on a lift for less than $10, which where do you see that anymore? <laughs> Now, the California Zephyr continues west to Emeryville, California. We will be on the next train headed west, but first we have a day to explore Salt Lake City. By transit, of course. You'll see that video next week. Then following that, there will be a short break from our regular programming as I bring you two seasonal videos from Chicago and New York. In a few weeks, we'll hop back on the Zephyr for part three of the trip report. Don't miss any of it. Subscribe to Trains Are Awesome today. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.